Hello! I've spent the last week lurking around London deciding which people to bite. I've been doing it in a game too. That game is Vampire, an action adventure with a fascinating twist. The more people you hurt, the easier the game becomes. You see, you use their blood to power up our hero. But the more necks you suck dry, the messier the world becomes. To help you get through the game with minimal casualties, I've put together a list of advice. It covers everything from combat tips to the location of cures for London's various illnesses. It's everything I wanted to know first time round, so I hope you find it useful. Early in the tutorial, you'll be asked to buy one aggressive skill. With names like Claws and Blood Spear, they all sound good fun, but I'm going to recommend Shadow Mist. This move causes spikes to burst from your feet, or the feet of a targeted enemy, causing lots of trouble for everyone involved. Now this is my pick of the three moves for several reasons. One, it does 250 points of damage, which is the highest damage rating of the three available attacks. Secondly, it does shadow damage. In the early chapters of the game, this is an attack type that few enemies are resistant to. You'll find lots of humans strong against melee and ranged attacks, so a shadow move gives you a real advantage. This is another reason not to pick the claws. They are a melee attack and lots of humans are resistant, making it weaker. But the real reason and I like Shadow Mist ties into the second move you need to get unlocked. Reed's Bite Attack is arguably the best move in the entire game. For starters, biting enemies refills your blood meter, which is what you use to fuel your vampire powers like Shadow Mist and Self Heal. Secondly, you can upgrade bites to heal Reed, giving you a top up in the middle of a fight. Biting is also your stealth attack. If you approach an enemy from behind, you can slam them to the ground and get a sneaky bite. You have to walk up to an enemy for this to work, by gently tilting the analog stick on a pad or using the Q key on the keyboard. To make this free hit work as hard as it can, I recommend spending experience points on hard biting. This increases bite damage and with just a couple of upgrades, it lets you use a stealth attack to wipe out an enemy's entire health bar in one go. Unless you invest in this, your stealth attack will always be underpowered. But what I really like about the bite is the way it can combo with Shadow Mist. Mixing, biting and Shadow Mist is a great trick as one move draws enemies towards you and the other kills everything around you. When I see a group of enemies together, I pick one to attack and run at them. When I'm in range, I use that secondary stake attack to stun my target, opening him up for a bite. Your stamina refills during the biting animation, so don't worry about really hammering that secondary attack button. As soon as the feeding ends, I drop Shadow Mist at my feet and dodge backwards. Nearby enemies will run straight into the attack and it hurts everyone. Now one important thing to note about this, don't lock onto an enemy during this move, as that triggers Shadow Mist at their feet. You want to use it where you stand, as that's where enemies swarm. It's a great combo that can be triggered over and over again. Because stamina recharges during the feed, you are ready to stun the next attacker. And because you just fed, you always have the blood to trigger Shadow Mist. Goons won't stand a chance. <laughs> The streets of London are patrolled by rival factions, vampire hunters and, well, vampires, so it's possible to make the two fight. Once engaged with you, enemies will follow you for some distance, letting you lead them towards other nasty creatures. Get them close enough and the two gangs will kick off. If they don't kill each other off completely, they'll at least hurt each other, letting you swoop in and finish them off in a weakened state. If you want to make it more fun, you can place bets on who will win. A werewolf thing or four dudes with clubs? My money is on the sneaky vampire watching from the sidelines. Of course, it's also important to keep weapons in good working order. The problem is, it can be hard to find the materials needed to upgrade your killing implements so you need to choose carefully. My first bit of advice is not to waste materials upgrading the used machete or the used stake that you're given in the tutorial. Neither can be upgraded above level 2. It's better to hold on to materials until you find weapons that can be upgraded to level 5. When you reach Pembroke Hospital after the tutorial, head upstairs towards your office and look in the room on the left to find the used hacksaw. This is a simple, fast weapon that kept me safe for most of the game. I also focused on upgrading the Pruin stake. You can find it in this Pruin base. You'll visit here as part of the wrong target investigation that you unlock when you speak to Thelma Howcroft in Pembroke Hospital. Here is the location on the map. 
These are the weapons I favoured, but the important thing is that you pick a couple to focus on. Try to upgrade everything you find and you'll never have the parts to develop anything to a serious level. And while we're talking about materials and upgrades, once you sleep and wake up on a new night, make sure you revisit old locations to collect new items. The game has a habit of restocking areas once you've left them, or at least letting you search containers you couldn't loot the first time round. Enemies also respawn and will drop new resources when you kill them. It's a particularly good habit for collecting medical supplies. I'd certainly spend time running a quick loop of the map before you visit the merchants. They charge a huge amount for things you can easily find for free. Bring this fading light into the shadows. Deciding when to drink blood is the big dilemma in Vampire. Sucking on someone's neck will boost experience and help upgrade skills which will lower the combat difficulty. The downside is you destabilise the region and can negatively impact the story. If you must drink blood however, take your time doing it. When you first meet characters, you can only access some of the XP contained in their blood. To raise the XP, you need to get to know them better. Now this is quite a simple process. Most information is gained by talking to them and their neighbours. Some clues are hidden in documents. Just take time to search every room in the area for letters and notes. Other information can only be uncovered by completing investigations. These are side missions that characters will give you. It's worth noting that if you do kill a character before doing their investigation mission, you won't be able to unlock it. The short version is, if you're going to drink from someone, don't do it until you've raised their XP bar to the highest level. Killing named characters comes at a steep cost, so you at least want to get the maximum rewards for it. Another factor that impacts the XP value of a character's blood is their health. When you look at the citizen menu, you can see which characters are sick. The yellow part of the health bar shows you the experience you'll be losing if you drink from them in this state. To heal people, you need to brew antidotes at the crafting table found in any save room. But at the start of the game, you only have recipes for illnesses of the heart. To brew these, you just find the relevant ingredients by looting objects around the hospital. To learn the cures for illnesses involving the lungs, you need to visit Dr. Rakesh Chadana. Now he can be found outside the northern wall of the Pembroke Hospital. He'll sell you the enigmatic formula. Take this formula to a crafting table and analyse it and you'll learn how to heal cold, bronchitis and pneumonia. To heal problems involving the mind, you need to head to the cemetery in the northeast corner of the map. Follow the path through the cemetery to the northwest exit and you'll find a body by a broken wall. It's here on the map. Search the body and you'll find a strange formula. Analyse this at a crafting table to unlock cures for headache, migraine or neuralgia. Slightly more fiddly than popping a paracetamol. A quick note on the cemetery, you will naturally go to this location a few hours into the story missions, but you are free to visit it as soon as you reach Pembroke Hospital. It's home to level 16 enemies, but a low level hero can run past them. The biggest challenge is getting into the cemetery as it's guarded by level 15 vampire hunters. You can't open the gate while under attack, so be prepared for a fight. The old shadow mist trick will work. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? If you do decide to start drinking the people of London, you might wonder how mesmerised levels work. The mesmerised skill leads people to a quiet place to drink their blood. To activate it, you start a conversation with your intended victim and press the left bumper on the control pad or Q key. But not every neck is available from the beginning of the game. Each character has a different mesmerised level. It roughly works out that the more XP a character has to offer, the higher their level is. Your mesmerised level raises as you play through the main story missions. It is tied to big story decisions at the end of key missions. I'm not going to spoil any of them here. I guess this is to stop you from killing important characters early in the story, but it does mean you have to wait ages to drink the juiciest characters. Like this tasty priest. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses. I'm counting down the days. While you can explore the map at your own pace, there is one kind of side mission to be careful of. Some areas have residents who are under attack from vampires. Save their lives and they'll become part of your story. But if you fail to save them before you next go to sleep, the character will die by the time you wake up. Problem is, if you discover one of these events in an area with high level enemies, you'll have to kill those enemies to avoid failing the mission. My advice is this, if you stumble on one of these events, throw everything you've got at it. 
Don't be afraid to use health serums and unload all your guns. It's better to blow some resources than lose that character forever. If you're really worried about stumbling on them by accident, I've listed the events that I found in my playthrough in the text description. That way I won't spoil any surprises for you. Are you alright, miss? I... I don't know. Those are the tips and tricks that have been helping me survive the cold, foggy nights of Vampire. But as always, I am keen to hear your own suggestions. Have you got a Vampire build that's doing the job for you? Let me know in the comments. And while you're there, why not give the video a like and subscribe to the channel? I would use my mesmerised skill to force you to subscribe, but I trust that you'll do the right thing. Hopefully we'll see you again soon. Goodbye!